Hi folks, uh, this is Luca. I'm a solution architect at Firebolt. And today I'm going to show you a sample data app that's built with, with Flask and Python together with the Firebolt backend. So data apps or data intensive applications are a blend of dashboards um, and mobile or web applications where you really want to have like a seamless uh, user experience while slicing and dicing through large data sets. Uh, so imagine you have a, a big data set and this can really be, you know, in the hundreds of uh, gigabytes and terabytes. And you want to have um, kind of a seamless, very performant way of interacting with the data, filtering, you know, um, drilling in, drilling out, etc. So let's take a look at an example. This is uh, the Firebolt app. Uh, we have uh, the, the login screen here. If I click login, I'm authenticating to the backend and immediately I get a, a dashboard on my home screen. And so this is uh, the, uh, the experience we wanna get really, you know, uh, one or two seconds until we get um, uh, the data back and visualized uh, to the end user. Um, this is a, a data set that uh, is coming from one of our customers called AppsFlyer. It's in the ad tech space. Uh, so you think you see things such as, you know, impressions, click through rates, clicks, etc. Uh, and then you can, of course, uh, filter through this data set and, and uh, you know, focus on specific things. For example, I can change dates. Uh, let's take maybe uh, two months of data. And then for a specific media source, and let's say iOS as a platform. And if I click refresh, you'll see that really I get the results uh, pretty, pretty fast. Uh, now, of course, uh, sometimes it's spent on rendering uh, things on the UI and sometimes it's spent as well to, you know, communicate with the backend. So, you know, to process and to find the data that you need, uh, bring it back to the client and then present it in this UI. Um, all right. So this is the, uh, the, the front end. Let's focus a bit on how this was actually developed. So switching to Visual Studio Code. Uh, my example is running in Docker as a container. So uh, obviously I have uh, here in my solution a couple of, you know, Docker related things such as, you know, Docker ignore, Docker file, etc. cetera. Uh, but since it's running in Flask, uh, I need to follow a specific, you know, structure for this to work. So uh, Flask, you know, implicitly um, uh, kind of expects a couple of things uh, in, in your um, project structure. Uh, and then, you know, if, if we go through these, you'll get an idea of how it's actually uh, working. So first of all, I have my requirements file, which actually lists all of the dependencies that I need. So I have some of, you know, which are Flask related, such as Flask login, migrate, etc. cetera. Uh, but I also have uh, a Python SDK for Firebolt. So Firebolt SDK, a specific version, as I can also focus on the latest one if I want to. Um, and this one is hosted on GitHub. So if you go here, you can find the latest versions. You can find some samples and some documentation. But we're using this essentially to, um, you know, to simplify the way we communicate with the Firebolt engines or with the backend, right? We can also go through kind of vanilla REST APIs, but then we need to, um, you know, handle the the alt token and all of the other stuff uh, ourselves using the Python SDK. Of course, streams like this and then makes it a bit less um, complex. All right, so requirements. I have my .env file for Docker. Here is where I specify, you know, specific things such as my username and password, the, the database uh, and the engine I'm going to use to communicate. Um, and then I have a couple of other folders which are really Flask related, right? So um, the home folder obviously used, you know, for getting the index page. Uh, of course, you know, the get and post methods are here. I have some logic to uh, to get the, uh, the selected values out of the session. So if I change, you know, the calendar or some of the drop downs, I persist it in the session. And then as the user moves, you know, from one page to the next, uh, this is persisted and he always has his selected filters. Um, the other thing here is we have authentication, which obviously um, is, you know, used to protect the, the, the actual data app from uh, unauthorized access. So here's where we have, you know, our login page, um, the logic behind the login, um, you know, creating users uh, and so on. And then we have Firebolt, which is actually where the logic of talking to Firebolt is, but we'll, uh, we'll, we'll come back to uh, this one in a second. 
Um, and then static in, and templates, these two are interesting. So static or assets, this has all of my CSS images, JavaScript, etc. So this is actually, you know, the, the kind of um, uh, the, the UI stuff uh, or, or the, the nice and, and the beautiful assets that are being rendered. Um, and then I have my templates, which is actually the HTML. So this provides the structure to the web page. And of course, uh, together with some, you know, flash goodies, it enables you to quickly, uh, you know, render stuff and uh, really create an app uh, in, a, in a fast and efficient way. So I have my index.html. Um, this has all of the filters. You see here the date from, date to. We have the media source, the platform. And then we have the different uh, KPIs, which are... Um, in this uh, in this template, so I include this KPI as kind of a sub template, um, and then this actually um, has all of the different metrics, right? So it has placeholders. You see here one for impressions, one for CTR, one for clicks, and so on. Uh, and here is where you know all of the. If I go back to my page all of the metrics and all of the charts and the tables uh, uh, there is where it gets rendered so if i go back to visual studio you'll see that i have my daily funnel here as well it's a canvas i have my table for the performance summary with the headings and the different you know columns and then some logic to iterate through the rows and, and so on all right going back to our firebolt folder this is where we have the actual logic of talking to our backend right so in my roots.pi I have a KPIs method. And this one actually has all of the logic to execute the queries on Firebolt, right? So you'll notice that we're using the Firebolt SDK. So we have, you know, a couple of imports. And in this method, we have first the default values. If we don't get them from the session, then we use the defaults. Otherwise we use those that the user selected. Um, and then what we do next is we need to create a, a connection object, right? So we supply all of the Firebolt uh, credentials, my username and password, the database and the engine that I want to talk to. And once I have that, I can go and execute my queries. So what I do next is I create a cursor. I have my SQL query here uh, with the different filters that were selected. And once this gets executed uh, in my result set, I get all of the five KPIs back. So here is where I actually calculate the total installs, the CTR and, and so on. Um, once this is back, I just parse the results and, and put these into the variables. Um, next two statements are pretty simple, you know, similar to the one above. This one is for the performance summary, and this one is for the daily funnel, so for the chart. So the same approach. I'm just using, uh, you know, pandas and a data frame here uh, to simplify some things, but it, it's in general it's the same approach. So we issue a query that's parameterized. Uh, we get some results back. We parse those results. And then what we do next is we return, uh, our method returns these results and th those will be replaced. Um, you know, the placeholders will actually get the, the, the concrete values. So impressions content will get the impressions. CTR will get the percentage of the, of the click-through rate. Um, we'll get our rows for, the, for creating the table. We'll, we'll go through that and then show all of the columns and the values um, and so on. So quite simple. Uh, what powers this uh, in the backend, of course, is Firebolt. And Firebolt is um, executing these queries in a very, very efficient and fast way. So if we go back and take a look at the Firebolt UI, just to show you what's under the hood. In our demo database, uh, the AdTechDB, we have a couple of tables. The main table that's being queried is called LTV or lifetime, a lifetime value, sorry. And this one has 51 columns. It has a primary index and the schema is here as well. So uh, if I do a count on this table, you'll notice, you know, quite a large table, almost 58 billion rows. Also, if I show you the, the size of the table, it's, uh, let's go here, two terabytes, almost two terabytes, right? 1.8 and then uh, uncompressed. So before being ingested into Firebolt, it was almost 32 gigs. So you get a nice compression ratio as well with Firebolt. Um, the data is in and you see that uh, if I execute this query, which is essentially the query that's powering the performance summary table, 
you'll notice that you know I get results quite quickly. So 0 0.4 seconds. And this is the type of experience we want to have with data apps, right? So uh, you really want to have snappy experience, even on large data sets, even on data sets that are, you know, uh, that are having raw data and, and not some, you know, pre, uh, pre rolled up data where you lose uh, the granularity that you need, right? So Firebolt enables you to really query data uh, that's in raw format and, uh, you know, together with our primary index and the, the, the aggregating and join index, we really enable you to build data apps uh, on this very, very granular uh, data sets. Um, the other thing I want to show you here is even if I change this and go into kind of the two months of data, uh, it's still going to be quite snappy. So still below one second. And you can see that the scan bytes uh, out of the two terabytes is only 15 gigs, right? So very efficient at finding data, but also because we use the aggregating index we have the data, you know, on, on the granular level, but also pre-computed in the ag index. So in this particular sample, we are returning data from the index. Um, and because it's already grouped by and kind of, uh, you know, condensed or aggregated, uh, it's definitely a smaller data set. And therefore, uh, you know, it, it's more efficient to serve data from there instead of having to fetch all the rows, then do the calculation, you know, the, the group buys and all of that. So Firebolt enables you to really, uh, you know, not change your queries while having indexes on top of it, which help you to, to get the speed that you need for your use cases. Um, and finally, the other thing I wanted to show you is I can run this query on, you know, engine, which is called uh, AdTechDB v4 Analytics, which is, you know, a $9 per hour engine, has the, you know, 36 CPUs, 70 gigs of RAM, etc. Uh, but I can also run it on a smaller engine. So imagine I have a, an internal team um, such as my analysts or, you know, my BI team that don't need really sub-second performance. They're okay with one or two seconds, but I also want to save some money, right? So if I switch over to this kind of engine and run my query, let's see how how long it takes. So 1.8, one, sorry, 1.5 seconds, right? So again, quite a fast experience on this large, large data set. Um, so... Firebolt as a backend is really good for serving you know, data apps. It can uh, you know, give you really, really good performance by utilizing the primary index and the aggregating and join indexes. And really it enables the developer to focus on the core functionality while you know, uh, Firebolt kind of makes sure that everything is performance and snappy uh, in your data app. That's it. Thank you for listening and talk to you soon.